Welcome back to We Still Like Each Other, the podcast. I'm Travis. And I'm Stephanie. And this is the podcast where we show that the honeymoon stage can last forever. Forever and ever. Hi, my love. Hey, daddy. What's going on? Not much. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Yeah, you look yeah. good. Thank you. Beautiful. <laughs> yeah, it's been, um, it was great having Jojo and Dara on last week. Kind of, mm-hmm. they, what's that saying? When you like do something for the first time. What? <laughs> Oh, they broke our cherry in uh, this new studio. In this new studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so they were our first guests in the new studio. Um, yeah, it was dope. Yeah, I love and having them. we decided that we're going to merge podcasts. So We still les each other. Yeah, so instead of there being less chat podcasts and we still like each other podcasts, we will be one podcast moving forward. Are we keeping this going? April Fools. <laughs> <laughs> Most people saw right through that bullshit. <laughs> it was well, cute. It was a little last minute idea that we had. I was like, we should do that. And Travis went ham on the cover. He's like, let me make it look legit. I almost went too ham. I was like, I'm about to make a fake Instagram. Yeah. You were kind of annoying me with that. I know. I even went to the garage with it because I was like, if she says something to me while I'm in this creative zen mode, <laughs> I'm going to be pissed off. But you didn't do it. I got frustrated because it was I had to like authenticate it was just too much yeah the only reason I was frustrated not because I'm like stop your creative juices you know why because we had guests yeah we were hosting people over and he's here like going ham on this like last minute idea to do an April Fool's which you know I appreciate like how much effort you put into this podcast like you know, we had a conversation right before this started about this show. And, like, I know it's so important to you and me, to us. So I get it. But then we have to draw a balance between, like, living in the real world. And we had guests and you were just doing too much. I was like, he needs to chill. Speaking of our guests, shout out, <laughs> shout out to Brittany and Leo Polanco. They were on the podcast, like, over a year ago. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, they came to spend the night with us. We had a great time. I loved their energy. Loved hanging out with Leo. Yeah. Playing video games, having a good old man's time. Yeah, Travis literally played enough video games to make up for like the past six months, maybe. Let me tell you, right? I knew what? that you were going to be like, yeah, you're gamed out. You're good for the week. <laughs> I knew something was coming with that. Like, like let's say tomorrow, I'm like, yeah, I just want to have a chill day, play some videos. Like, you're not gamed out with all that time. No, absolutely not. I was very intentional. I was like, finding time for you to play video games like i cooked breakfast and i washed the dishes today and i did it knowing i was gonna give you that time and space to play video games so that's not true okay well i appreciate that um (laughs) i had a really good time and outside of the video games i just i love um britney and leo just having conversations with them was cool and baby Luca. Yeah, and even Eli had a good time with Luca. Like, he just comes alive with other kids, even if they're younger than him. I feel like River's still, like, too young, like, too much of a He's baby. Like, don't touch me. But Luca was, like, engaging with him, so he had a great time. It was dope. So besides Brittany and Leo, how else was your week? Um, My week was dope. I actually started reading this book that I've had forever. Um, I'm sure people have seen it on Instagram, different people talking about it. Um, It's called The Four Agreements by Don Miguel Ruiz. I don't know if I said his name all the hicked out for no reason, but. (laughs) He's like, my name is Don. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. But I think it led us to have a really dope conversation. So I read like the introduction and the first agreement and we ended up having a dope convo the other night. Do you remember what it was about? Remind me. Come on, babe. you'll You'll get the wheels turning. I got a lot of information in this big head. (laughs) The conversation we had, I was like, I wish the cameras were rolling. Like, this was like a really good conversation. It was about how we kind of live up to the ideas of ourselves that people ingrain in us. So if you grow, if you grew up hearing like, I'm lazy, then you kind of self-fulfill that, you know, like sometimes someone's personality is not who they genuinely could have been, but it's who has the world has convinced them that they are. Yeah. So, like I said, you got the wheels turning. So <laughs> I remember the convo. And I was just kind of pointing to, like, my childhood, right? Mm-hmm. Um, 
always been told like, you know, Travis just stays in his room. He's a good kid. He's quiet. And it's like, you start to hear that so much. It's like, and then am, am I those things? Or have you guys told me that so much that now I've internalized it and now it's who I am? And you were also rewarded for that, right? Mm. Like it seemed like a good thing. Well, you know, it is, but it was told to you as a reward. Like, oh, he's great. So you, you kind of were being that way because you got the reward of being liked by other adults Mm, i was easy yeah and easy is good but easy could also be like limiting right for Mm -hmm. kids that's why sometimes like sometimes i'll say like river's easy but i always put it in quotes and i'm like i don't mean easy in that way because i don't want to limit him um but yeah the first agreement talks about being impeccable with your word and in the way that he defines it is about impeccable like the actual meaning means without sin we know we use it as like without error Mm. right like if you do an impeccable job at like a painting you did it perfectly so the original meaning was without sin yeah that's like Mm. what it means because that's that's interesting because the word sin in the way he defines it in the book is anything that you do that goes against your true self or something Mm. like that okay um so when we talk about our word our language the way we speak i've spoken multiple times on this podcast about manifesting what you want speaking positivity into your life not being negative and that's kind of what that was about but like on a whole new level like it kind of recharged me and gave me more motivation to be very careful with the way i speak and the things i speak on right Um, And having a podcast, like we're speaking as a hobby all the time. And I know that podcasts tend to get bad reps because people are on there just feeling like because they have a platform, they could say anything that they want. They're not worried about the people that they hurt, the people that they offend. That's something I had to learn early on, too. How so? Just certain things that, you know, I'm. I feel like my role here is to kind of like be the contrast to like not just. And sometimes I push that too far. I'll just say things that I know are opposite of what you're saying. Quote, unquote, playing the devil's advocate. Right. right? And, and we got to think about how harmful that is. So there are things, there are subjects where I I know myself personally where I would have gave it more. I would have been more delicate with it. But I'm just like, no, I got to I got to be opposite of her. So, no, I don't, don't want to bring it up again. Y'all go watch those old episodes. But. I know like when I sit down with my thoughts and I think about how I genuinely feel about something, it's not always like this negative thing. Yeah. But we we can easily fall into the pattern of like, you know what? Our brand is I say something, you disagree. And then there's this back and forth and it's like a female perspective, a male perspective, and that's who we are. But we're building that why the reward system of social media people like when we're fighting people like when we're opposing each other and we're seeing that as reward is like setting off the dopamine in our head right like even when i make a clip and i see that we're like on opposing sides or something i'm like ooh, wait till the wait till social media gets this right but according to like what this man is saying we're kind of not even realizing that we're probably manifesting opposition mm. in our marriage mm. Right. Because we're like, oh, people love it when we're on opposite sides or I always have one opinion. You know, I speak for women and you come in with a male's perspective. We're feeding that for the show, but then it's going to come into our life even more. That, we're going to be seeking disagreement. That just hit me like hard. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't think about how this can. Although, like, I think there's so much positive that has come from this podcast. But mm-hmm. with the mindset you were talking about how that could affect our marriage Mm -hmm. it's like there's no cameras there's no microphones but then i'm we're still having like this negative interaction because on the podcast it does great for entertainment right and the thing is it's not so obvious right so we won't be wednesday at 6 p.m saying oh my God, are we like just fighting just because of the podcast? We won't even realize that we're like manifesting disagreement and discord in our marriage. Mm. Um, In the book, it focused, at least the part, I only read that first agreement so far, Um, but it talks a lot about like your personal responsibility to kind of step outside of who you think you are just 
based on who you've been conditioned to be. Okay. Right? So we all grow up being conditioned from birth on like what's right, what's wrong, gender roles, society roles, X, Y, and Z. Um, and a lot of them are, we think are for the good, right? Like to keep us safe. But sometimes they kind of f- create this false idea of who we truly are and it limits us. And I've spoken about imposter syndrome, right? To you, what is imposter syndrome when you think of that term? Just feeling like you don't be- or feeling like you don't belong in the thing that you're doing. So usually it's used as an example in the workforce. Mm-hmm. So it's like you get a really great position and then you see people who are in a similar role as yours and you're like hearing them talking and like, what the fuck? I do not belong here. Mm-hmm. But some, you know, someone saw something in you to put you there. Most cases. Yeah. And when I was reading this, I'm like, there's this imposter syndrome and everything and our ability to parent. Right. Even, you know, I'm like trying to gentle parent, you know, obviously like I got my ass beat as a kid. I don't beat my kid's ass. Right. But then it's like, I know I still yell more than I would like, but I've convinced myself like, you know what? I'm doing a little better. And I'm just going to yell because I got yelled at. I got hit. So the fact that I don't hit, like, I'm okay. I'm probably always going to yell because I always got yelled at. Mm. Instead of seeing it as something that I can change. Um, I'm going to read, like, a little quote from the book that kind of made me think of, like, oh, my God, this is, like, how imposter syndrome starts to develop, right? Um, it says, in these agreements, so in it, in this book, he talks about agreements just on terms of, like, Things that repeat in our life that give us these ideas, right? You tell yourself who you are, what you feel, what you believe, and how to behave. The result is what you call your personality. In these agreements, you say, this is what I am. This is what I believe. I can do certain things and some things I cannot do. This is reality and this is fantasy. This is possible and this is impossible. So it's like, I think I've talked to you about this. Like, I never thought about being in certain professions because it just didn't seem in the realm of possibility. Like a doctor. Yeah, right? Like you, as a kid, what do I want to be? I'll be a doctor. But then by the time you're like 14, 15 and you failed a math class or a math test or you didn't turn in a homework assignment, all of a sudden I'm not disciplined enough to be a doctor. I'm not good at math enough to be a doctor. All from one class, one test, one failed, one missing assignment, we instantly are trained to feel like we're not good enough mm. to be that. Um, And it just shook me because one, I have so much more life to live and I can make so many changes to be the best version of myself, but also like checking the way that I speak to my kids and the way I even speak to you. Yeah. I feel like you, you, that's something I've seen show up already in terms of how you speak to us. Um, you know, it's through the things you've told me that I feel like I've can, I can get more out of life and I deserve more um, in the workforce in terms of being healthier. So I think you're already practicing that and it, it's show it's showing a positive. Um, it's already bringing positivity to my life. I think it needs to be more intentional on my end. Um, like even I think Eli the other day, he like made a mistake while putting on, I don't remember exactly what it was, but right after he goes, Oh, I'm so stupid. And I, because I read this book, that's something I would have ignored. Like we all call ourselves dumb, stupid, lazy. When we make mistakes, I said, don't say that. You're not stupid. Don't say that to yourself. And I I plan to be very intentional intentional about the way we speak to ourselves. And I tend to do that like, oh, I'm so lazy or like, or even things of like, oh, I don't work out. If I don't work out in the morning, then I can't work out in the afternoon. I say that all the time. Like, that's just a fixed thing. Like, it's impossible. Like, there's some law or some, some um, thing that impacts our environment that literally prevents me from working out past noon. Like, I do agree that you're probably, it's better for you in terms of your productivity to work out first thing Mm -hmm. in the morning. But it's not like the morning's past, oh, that's it. Yeah. And even, is it better for my productivity? Or have I convinced myself of that so much that when I don't work out in the morning, I allow myself to procrastinate more? Yeah, because I've, I don't know, this is all speculation, but I just view it, it's a a big mountain to 
get over, right? Mm -hmm. If you get it out first thing, and now it's like the the day is everything else feels easy. Yeah, because I did the you did the hardest part. thing you had to do today. Yeah, so that mental aspect of it. So I don't I don't know it could and but like you said, it doesn't mean that that morning passes and then you can't pick it up in the afternoon, the night before you go to bed. You know, mm -hmm. it's tricky. And it's hard to kind of change what you've been doing forever and ever. And then suddenly be like, you know what? I can do this differently. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was me and my book. <laughs> Anything I, you want to share about this week? Um, no, I mean, the week went by pretty fast. And I was, I took next week off because, El is that his spring break? Mm -hmm. So Eli has spring break. And when we were planning my days off, it was just like, take those days. You just, <laughs> I'm not trying to call you out. But it just, you made me think of something that I saw. It's like a, someone's interviewing families like on the street. Okay. And they ask the dad, like, who's your daughter's teacher? They have no idea. Who's your daughter? They have no idea. And the mom knows everything. And here you are the night before Eli's spring break talking about, I took next week off. Is it Eli's spring break? Yes. First of all, that's not a fair example. Why not? Because I didn't know if if in Jersey they call it something else. That's all I, I was referring to. All right. <laughs> I think that that was a reach. That was a reach. All right. Let's see. His teacher, Mr. Smith. Don't say his teacher's Mr. name Smith. on the podcast. It's not Mr. Smith. That is a joke. <laughs> <laughs> uh, train of thought. Okay. So, yeah, I took next week off. And yeah, I've been looking forward to that all week. So it's been helping me push through the work week. Yeah. Um, other than that, it's uneventful. Um, I think the highlight of this week will be Brittany and Leo yeah. and Luca. I, I will say that I honestly, until you just said it, I forgot that like tomorrow you don't have work. Like I was having Sunday scaries. Oh, uh, so I, I kind of, um, I'm replaying some of our conversations from like an hour ago and I could see... Why you were like, Stress. some of the things Sunday you Sunday scaries. Like, I literally get stressed out when I know it's like the work week. I got to get Eli ready for school. We got to get up early tomorrow. Yeah, it's you like, said a few things that made me think that you didn't remember that. I didn't until you said it right now. Okay. Are you happy again? Are you um, back? I, I like put up a um, pep in my step. <laughs> okay. Not going to lie. <laughs> That's good. Um, before we get too far, because sometimes we totally forget, but I do want to um, pause for a second and just acknowledge that we're in this beautiful studio and all the people that helped bring this together. Yeah. So uh, go ahead. Who, who we thank So this today? is in no particular order. No particular order. I want to shout out Midnight Electric. Mm -hmm. For our electrical needs in for the basement. For our light and electrical needs. They, <laughs> they were the first ones that came down here to do some work mm -hmm. and amazing. They set it off. <laughs> Followed by my dad. Yes. My dad. Tony Whiteman Sr. Okay, we're, we're using full names. Everybody uh, knows your name, baby. Okay, yeah. Uh, my dad, he, without being asked, mm -hmm. he just offered his services. It's like, we got to get this done. And this is like months have passed since Midnight Electric. And I will say that just in general, he's been super supportive of the podcast. Like, even just with just asking, like, how's it going? Who's a guest? Or what's new? Like, he shows genuine care and... um appreciation for what we do and you know i love him for that yeah so he came and really kicked us off here um all right quicker baby quicker oh i'm oh, sorry <laughs> this is how they feel like with the oscars it's like all right hurry up with your yeah, acceptance like, speech i want to start playing the music <laughs> okay okay quickly um someone i consider a friend also former co-worker george he did the a lot of the work and in the here. construction the stuff. construction stuff next um, who's next another really good friend of mine <laughs> Derek. he came helped us paint yeah. Um, really set the tone. Uh, and then me and Steph finished it up. Um, last but not least, we got this new sign. Mm -hmm. um, we got it from Fem World on Instagram. And uh, someone who has been listening to us from the beginning, someone I consider a friend. I also used to work with them. These are like three different jobs I'm talking mm -hmm. about. I know the music's playing, so I'm going to hurry up. But um, <laughs> Eddie. Eddie saw that we got a new studio and was like, I want to gift you guys something. And I mentioned that we already got this sign. He's like, I'll yeah, pay for it. He helped us um, finish paying for this sign that we got. So that was awesome. So I really appreciate it. also want to thank Lori. We, we like needed, we used her to bounce a lot of ideas. Yeah. The, going back to the beginning, a lot of like 
even like what we needed in terms of material. Lori, my yeah, we my, were able to bounce ideas off of her. My stepmother really gave us a lot of um, guidance. Mm-hmm. I think that's everyone. If I forgot you, we I love, love you. you. <laughs> <laughs> so let's move on. <laughs> All right. So I wanted to discuss something but did you want to do the did you know first yeah, or topic it. number one first let's do did you know let's do did you know okay oh. so i saw this fact fun fact on tiktok so i want to shout out the tiktoker his <laughs> name is rob x films okay. um did you know x films like rated x like porn no that would be like triple x baby oh so x just like times yes like rob films yeah okay sorry <laughs> <laughs> did you know did you know most men don't receive their first flowers mm. until their funeral? I love that one. And it's such a simple statement, but it's also a mind fuck. Okay. Why? Because it's true. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, why? Why but is do that? do men want flowers? I I wouldn't mind flowers. Hmm. And I don't... I don't want flowers in the same way you do, right? We've had conversations about how you just you want more like random flowers mm-hmm. and but I feel like on occasion it depend I feel like if it was a special occasion and someone showed up with flowers, I'd be like, Oh wow, that's nice. Okay. Or if someone wanted to just show like, Hey, I appreciate you. So I think for me, the flowers is I genuinely like plants. I like flowers. Like I like the botanical garden. Like I genuinely appreciate that. So I think the just because flowers is more so like you saw something that you knew I would like and brought it to me, right? So I think different people have different versions of what flowers are to them, right? Um, are you talk, Are you thinking like it's more metaphorical flowers? Yeah, mm. more, well, maybe that guy was so, being so serious. This, yeah, he this was guy being was literal. being more like literal. Yeah, but I also feel like some people don't want flowers, won't accept flowers, even women, right? But what I do think we have to be more intentional. Someone brought up that I use that word a lot. We have to be more intentional about showing the people we love that we support them and we think about them and we care for them in whatever way that is for them. So um, in thinking of this, did you know, without going into too much detail, I was woken up this morning by a very long text message from a really good friend of mine. And in the text message, they were just saying how much they appreciate me giving you your flowers and giving me my flowers and i love yous and Mm -hmm. this is another man yeah um i got emotional reading it Mm -hmm. i was very appreciative of it and it just kind of made me think of like one that seemed that's deemed soft Mm -hmm. by other men or most most of this uh the population Mm -hmm. it's like another man was telling you he loves you and writing you it was like one of them long, like, if you got that from your partner, you'd be like, what the fuck did I do? <laughs> it, was, it was long like that. But after reading it all and taking it in, it was just, like, really touching. And I'm also appreciative that someone took the time to write that. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just made me think, like, why doesn't that happen more often? It's not until someone's, like, you know, really sick or on their deathbed or, I don't know, something. Yeah. That's, like, sometimes you you hear like people's eulogies or people after they're dead and people speaking so highly of them. And it's like, let's give people their flowers metaphorically before they're gone, you know? Um, and I was talking, even Brittany and Leo, they brought me like a a pot with like some flowers. Mm. And when we had Gino and Evo, they brought me a plant. See, people are giving me my flowers because oh, people, it makes they, me happy. They know your love language. They know, <laughs> exactly. And I don't do well with gifts, like receiving gifts. And I think that gifts in the form of like a live plant is easier. Like it doesn't feel like uncomfortable, like accepting something that someone spent money on that's like a little weird sometimes. That it feels like they see me, they know me, they appreciate me, and they know it's going to put a smile on my face. Does that make sense? No, it does. Um, I think I just focusing on men. Mm-hmm. I just I wish we could be more expressive with our feelings. Yeah. Um, we haven't done any recap on the latest Love Is Blind. We might have to do that on Patreon. But one of like the common themes this season is how the men are having like really emotional conversations with each other 
and it's they're not shy about it and it's black men at that mm-hmm. um marshall and brett especially marshall and brett and mm-hmm. and brett acknowledges that you know and even you know shout out to even what's his name the Paul. one that they said was weird zach zach like i feel like he's very open as a man to man with paul like he's been super articulate about his feelings and um you know everybody's calling him weird but he's like one of my favorites like i really like him um so yeah so i think my hope is at least listen change starts with you so i think for the men in my life that i appreciate i'm gonna start to tell them more and and it might not be like a fucking letter (laughs) um i always used to say like one of my friends shout out to sneak he Mm -hmm. always when i feel like he was one of the first men that i remember when i get off the phone with him he's like i love you it's not like love you, bro, or one love, or mm-hmm. it's like, no, I love you. Yeah. Um, and that's carried over into, you know, how I hope I can show up for my other male friends. Yeah. I think that a lot of that, a lot of us in general, people have issues with that kind of expressive love because they didn't even have it with their own parents. Mm. Sometimes the first person we express love to is a romantic partner. Like, I didn't grow up even saying I love you to my siblings. Facts. And my parents, you know, it was, like, super dry. Like, they didn't have romance, at least not in front of us. Like, it seemed like a a commit. They were committed to each other. They took care of us, but they didn't have any romance. So, learning how to do that platonically is, is difficult. Yeah. It takes... um. Being intentional. Now, every time I say it, I'm laughing. <laughs> I was thinking about, like, who else I say I love you with. And I will say with when I get off, depending on where the conversation went, when I get off the phone with my father, he says I love you. Mm-hmm. So if it's, like, light and funny, it's usually like, all right, talk to you later. Yeah. But the other day, I talked to him about something a little bit more serious, and it ended with I love you. Does he say I love you, son? I feel like he sometimes might say, he, I love he you. calls he might, you, like, son. He might love you, son. Yeah. Love you, son. And not even I. Like when you said it, I heard his voice say son at the end of it. Love you, Pop. (laughs) (laughs) Keep it G. This man shit. (laughs) Yeah. That's dope. I feel like we have to do a better job of like having more emotional conversations with our son. Yeah. And like navigating those feelings. Um, He's getting at that age where he tells me like I embarrass him. (laughs) And earlier, I did something that kind of was like a little, not embarrassing, but like a very mom thing to do. But it's also like, um, I know what you're talking about. Was it, I guess it's his body, right? So mm-hmm. it's like, you would feel a way if someone's just like, look. Yeah, I was going to explain. Damn, uh, babe, can I, can I tell the story? Sorry. What happened? So just we were talking about our kids' feet and, you know, the baby's feet and Luca's feet. And then I was like, Eli's feet are like this. And I like was holding his foot and I took his sock off. And he's like, mom. And I'm like, you know what? You're right. Why would I like show your feet to someone else without like your permission? Um, So learning how to like honor those things and like, I get it. (laughs) But deeper than that, that was just like a little surface level thing that I instantly came to mind. You want flowers, baby? I do metaphorically or like literally i think more metaphorically yeah like i get them from you obviously but i think i want them from like people who if we claim in friends like i'm i'm in 2023 i'm just i'm over surface level friends like yeah. we gotta dig a little deeper men women like we have to dig a little deeper do you think there's a limit though because if you're getting too too deep then you can't have many friends or does that matter the quality or quantity, is there a balance? I think quality is better than quantity. Like, I don't, yeah, there's only so much energy I can give to people. But then, let's say you have a good friend, but you're, like, tapped out emotionally or just time. Like, you can't really get as deep with that friend. Does that make them not a friend anymore? But I think you think, you're thinking as deep as, like, someone's dumping on you. I don't view it that way. I feel like you can get deep without it being like a therapy session. Without it feeling heavy. Yeah. I guess knowing that everybody has their shit. It's like tough. Metaphorically shitting on you. (laughs) All right. Let's talk about. I'm like sad about this. Jonathan Majors. 
So what's going on with Jonathan Majors and his recent arrest? So he was arrested, I believe, by the NYPD Mm -hmm. um, for a domestic incident. Mm -hmm. I use that word, incident. Mm -hmm. Um, The way I understand the story is that his partner may have been trying to go through his phone. There was some type of struggle and he may or may not have put his hand around her neck to restrain her which left marks police showed up had and arrested him yeah and i guess so jonathan majors is an actor that's very popular right now like women are swooning and he's been acting in many big blockbusters right yeah marvel. most recently creed but he was in marvel he's what's his name kong Kang. Kang. Don't, um, don't judge me. I'm trying. But what's even more interesting in terms of the trajectory of his career, he mm-hmm. is going to be, in terms of the Marvel movies, like a really key factor in like the next two to three years of films, mm-hmm. if not more. So he's like a major part of it. Yeah. So, you know, I'm, I guess I'm jumping ahead a little bit. You know, the question with all this, this. I guess you could call it bad press is like, will that affect it? Yeah, no, definitely. You know, I don't think you're jumping ahead. I think the reason why we even care, the reason why we're talking about this is because we're fans of Jonathan majors mm-hmm. and my heart sank when I heard it. Cause I'm like, I love him to death and I've been so like root, I've been rooting for him, but I won't root for him or stand by him. If these allegations turn out to be true, if it turns out to be that he did, physically assault a woman and he's one of the things that makes him hot as fuck is that he's like a huge guy he's super buff so when i think about him assaulting a woman it scares the shit out of me so here's how i feel about it and obviously we don't know details so i'm just um Mm -hmm. asserting what i hope is this case Mm -hmm. if this is something that happened out of the heat of a moment and it was a one-off i think we can we can hear what though what happened in terms of him getting physical with his partner. Oh, see? I don't think we're we're defined by our worst decision. I don't think so either. But I think at his big age and who he is in the industry and to people and to, you know, the fans, I think he should have enough restraint to not physically assault his partner. Like he should be able to get the fuck up and leave. Before it gets there. I don't think there's a... If it was a one time, like... mm, What I'm hoping is he didn't do it. I'm not saying throw him away. I'm not saying cancel him. I'm just hoping that it's not what it seems. No. I'm not ready to cancel him. I don't like like cancel culture at all, Mm -hmm. honestly. Um, Like I said, I don't think... I think I said this last time when... um, last week with Jojo and Dara is like, we've all made mistakes here. Mm -hmm. We are not defined by those mistakes. I guess you could say that if you're something that you're doing repeatedly, then yeah, you are defined by that. (laughs) But if it's like a one-off, I don't think this should. But do we say all of us a one-off? Like I slapped the shit out of her one time. I punched in the face one time. I choked her one time. Like what? Like there's, it sounds okay. one time. Listen, (laughs) <laughs> and I'm not, this isn't one of those moments where Travis is just trying to be the opposing of Stephanie. Mm-hmm. I genuinely feel that if someone did that one time and then spent the rest of their life l- learning, like, what, why was that a trigger for me? Why I need to do better in life. I don't need to go around hitting people. Mm-hmm. I think that is possible. Yeah, absolutely. There are people who are together still that have had an incident. It's like, I know that that doesn't, that doesn't define you. I I don't know how many episodes ago I talk about that moment me and you had. Yeah. If you ended our marriage at that moment, where would we be? Yeah. So. But you didn't leave marks on me. You didn't choke me. You didn't. So what marks make no, a difference? No, but I'm saying it like, was aggressive. It, beha- it was aggre- on what it was. It was aggressive behavior. It was, but I, there's. I guess you this could say- woman was literally taken to the hospital, and again, but it that was, was protocol. That was protocol. But they saw injuries on her. It's not like, oh, it was protocol, y'all called, we have to take you. They they were able to see injuries on her. As far as I know, I'm like, uh, I just, I don't know. I don't I don't, know. I'm not saying cancel him either. I want to know the details. I want to know what's going on. But I also want to bring light to like 
this type of domestic violence. But th- and I feel like this conversation doesn't need to be looped into like abusers. Because Why not? because we don't know that he's an abuser. So to, no, I'm not saying we do. But th- I'm we have saying to be there very... is a bigger conversation to be had about the type of behavior that was exhibited. Definitely, but I don't think it needs to be looped in. Yeah, the I'm not saying putting, he's an abuser. I'm not saying because just... putting that label on someone, out, celebrity or not, yeah, that's yeah. very harmful. It's damaging. Absolutely. Um, the other part of this that I wanted to bring up is that you know his lawyers everyone on his team is saying like this isn't what it seems is not what happened and and i'm been here like hoping like i hope it's not what it seems like i'm you know i'm rooting for him and one of their tactics was to show that his innocence was to share text message that she sent why are you shaking your head because i don't i'm not a lawyer Mm -hmm. but even my little brain that thinks i'm a lawyer would have never had my client release this text message. Because you feel like it's damaging. It's damaging. Right? So I'm going to read part of the text messages. And this is the lawyer. And I'm assuming Jonathan Majors had to agree. Like, yeah, I agree. If you yeah. show this. And I think it's so many of us have this warped idea of what abuse is, what isn't, is someone deserving it or not. So she texts him. I guess the following day after everything happens. And she says, please let me know you're okay when you get this. They assured me that you won't be charged. So she's speaking to Jonathan about this. They said they had to arrest you as protocol when they saw the injuries on me and they knew we had a fight. So again, he's a big dude. They saw injuries on her and it was protocol to arrest him. And to me, this is classic, like, Stockholm syndrome. I don't know if that's the word, but you know, like when you're an abuser, you're like, oh my God, no, you shouldn't be charged. We, I've seen so many people have told stories even like a woman could be getting her ass beat. And then if someone defends her and hits the guy, she's now beating that guy's ass because she, don't touch my man. So this doesn't prove innocence to me. This just shows like a ride or die. Finish and then I'll get my thoughts. I'm so angry that they did, and I'm sorry you're in this position. We'll make sure nothing happens about this. I told them it was my fault for trying to grab your phone. So she is taking blame, and in her mind, me trying to grab your phone is grounds for this fight to have erupted. I don't like that. I don't agree with us having to look through people's phones. If you're at that point, things need to be handled. I've been so... Um, I don't know, paranoid is the word, but I've had my moments of needing to look through somebody's phone. Like, I get it. That does not mean you deserve to be hurt. So I guess whatever, we'll get into it. Um, I think his lawyer thought her taking ownership for what happened Mm -hmm. was going to like, the world was going to be like, oh, look, she says she started it. Uh huh. And also I feel like people feel like if the victim expresses like they aren't as victimized. No. Then people will feel bad. I like, feel oh. like we're a world where we we have more information than the than we did, I don't know, fifty years ago. And in a world of social media where people are learning from each other, we can see right through this that this is not okay. Cause she doesn't say I hit you or I don't she said it was my fault. They saw my injuries. Like I listen, I in one of my past relationships, I've been straight up like punched in the face before Mm -hmm. and i didn't do nothing except like yell like don't touch me Mm -hmm. and it was to the point where it like scared the other person to like oh shit he's serious (laughs) and i didn't have to like you didn't have to choke choke a bitch like yeah exactly so yeah i don't know what's going like i still don't think he should be canceled but i also don't think this helps no it doesn't um and i also feel like many of us I feel like he believed this show that he was innocent. She probably believes it. And we need to be more well-versed on what abuse is and how to handle our temper and healthy ways of handling conflict in a relationship. She also sends another text later that says, they just called again to check in on me. And I reiterated how this was not an attack and they do not have my blessing on any charges being placed. <laughs> So she's trying to defend her man by any means. And a lot of victims tend to do that. Yeah. 
um, I read the paper that they gave me about strangulation and I point blank and I said point blank, this did not occur and should be removed immediately. So I guess they were trying to show her what counts as strangulation because maybe she was like, he didn't really strangle me. So they were probably trying to explain it to her. Or uh, maybe I miss I I, t- I interpreted that different. I thought like maybe the police statement said strangulation and she was trying to say like, no, that should be removed because he didn't strangle. Okay, maybe that's what it is. I took it as like they were trying to explain to her because she said I point I said point blank this did not occur and should be removed immediately. The du- the judge is definitely going to be told this. She ensured this to me. I know you have the best team and there's nothing to worry about. I just want you to know that I'm doing well all that I can on my end. I also said to tell the judge to know that the origin of the call was to do with me collapsing and passing out and your worry as my partner due to our communication prior. So why does she collapse and pass out? You so, know, like to me, that sounds like if I'm reading this, I'm like, so did he did strangle her? No, I think she was probably distraught, potentially drunk, potentially high. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it, it sounds like just a night of regret. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I could see that happening. And I don't think a couple who has a rough night where they argue or tussle, I guess, should be like canceled. But we need to. And also, a bigger conversation is this: your partner that you're committed to. If so, what's in your phone that's so you have to protect and guard that you're so afraid of her seeing? Can we talk about that? About like, can we? I don't think it? it's about protecting. Like you, you know, we've had conversations about going through phones before. It's just that's my phone, mm-hmm. and it could be nothing but Bible verses and pictures of gardens in here. Mm-hmm. But that's my phone. So I feel like if you were coming at me aggressively, and I know, even though if I know I'm not doing anything, it would it would You're still right. kind of put your defense. Up. I guess I'm like thinking like what he's doing. You know, yeah. men ain't shit. Expecting, he must have yeah. been. But it's true. He could have been like, I just don't want you on my phone because it's my phone. Trust me. I guess. I guess I'm jaded because I know how y'all hear it in those so y'all can relate. <laughs> what? I'm going to say, niggas ain't shit. And with that Doja Cat song. <laughs> you know, I love that song. <laughs> so, yeah, babe. What are your final thoughts on this before we move on? Final thoughts. Listen, I'm speaking as a fan so you know i'm not being super objective here i'll be honest yeah i hope that it's not oh one more thing before i give my thoughts is like i hate the fact that now all of a sudden there's like people in his community of like actors all of a sudden saying like yeah i've been i've been trying to tell you all this time that jonathan majors ain't shit and he's an abuser who just like random people who claim to have been like because I guess he comes from like this um, community of actors, mm-hmm. and now they're claiming that, like, that's who he is mm-hmm. in terms of being an abuser. See, abuse. I didn't even know that. So, I just think that's nasty. Because if you felt so strongly about someone, why are you waiting until shit hits the fan? I don't know. Maybe because they just felt like people wouldn't believe them. I don't know, but I I find that weird too. Because I feel like if it wasn't like him, I would expect more people to be like, "This isn't like him." So for people to come out and say this is him is a little like concerning. Yeah, but I don't I don't know. I don't trust people who's like you all come from the same circle and now you have this one star who kind of like mm. is miles away from where you all are. Mm. So it sounds like some jealousy. jealousy and hate. Possibly. So to sum it up, I hope that this isn't a case of like a history of abuse. I hope that this was one bad night. Mm-hmm. I don't think he should be canceled. I think he should be educated. Yeah, absolutely. If he sees it as an issue too, because I don't want to be coddling someone who just doesn't want to change or only wants to change because of the impact on their career, not because of the impact they've had on people. Yeah. So if you're on YouTube, please leave us a comment, thumbs up. We didn't get a lot of comments last week. I don't know. It made me feel like y'all didn't like the episode. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I took that personally. I took it personally. No, yeah, I'm but kidding. listen, we love talking to y'all in the comments. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, we prefer public displays of affection. Mm-hmm. So although a lot of people do DM us, like yeah. 
put that shit on YouTube. Help the algorithm. So like we we are always replying to comments. We might have a few we need to catch up on, but we always do. Like Mm -hmm. if it's not that day, it's definitely in our plans for the week. Um, So yeah, if you have a thought, if it's about anything we've discussed so far or something we're going to discuss after this, please take it to the YouTube comments. Even if you're listening on those podcast apps like Apple and Spotify, come join the conversation on YouTube. Also, leave us a five-star review on any podcasting platform that you listen. Um, you can actually write a review on Apple Podcasts if you'd like. If not, just hit the five stars. Um, so thank you so much for spending time with us week after week. And we have a juicy also y'all can relate. And you ready? What's that face? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but one more thing. Patreon. Patreon.com forward slash we still like each other. We have our interactive recap number 20, I think, this week. Mm-hmm. So that'll be fun. Come join us. It'll be dope. Um, you ready? I'm ready. I'm like a little like, this one got me hot. <laughs> so the title of this, also y'all can relate, submission. Ooh, you titled it? Is, I titled it because this is the subject of the email. Okay. So it was easy. Cool, cool, cool. And it's, my husband is Polly. That was the subject of the email that I opened. And I was, and the context did not disappoint okay my husband is Polly. <laughs> so i'm in my early 20s and have been with my partner since i was 17 years old around february of 2021 so this is two years ago i felt as though he was not tending to my emotional needs and did not want to focus on making our relationship better so instead of taking the t- the mature route and ending things i stepped out on him so she cheated why are you closing your eyes I just didn't want, I didn't want to hear that. Yeah. It sucks because it's like she's able to say, like, he wasn't tending to my emotional needs. He didn't want to focus on making my relationship better. So end it. So end it. But I also think, like, early 20s, like, you know, you kind of get some attention that you're not getting. And it's like, ooh, like this candy you can't have. Yeah. Not saying it's right, but I'm saying it happens. Yeah, and for sure, for sure. It doesn't make you like a horrible person. Not at all. Listen, I was listen how much bail I was just giving to Jonathan Majors. Like mm-hmm. I just said, we're not we're not our worst mistake. Exactly. So we broke up for a couple of weeks, during which time he started seeing a woman I'll call Ariel. So she gave her a fake name. Okay. Thank you for giving us <laughs> the edit. Right. What's crazy to me is like if you're with someone. I find it so weird when people like get with someone else so fast, like the rebound. Mm. But anyway, yeah, because in your you always like raise your eyebrow like that were they person, always seeing them? That person was always like in the darkness. Yeah, exactly. In the midst of seeing her, he decided hastily he wanted to be back with me and proposed. We became sh- pregnant shortly after. I made it clear that I did not want him to make, maintain contact with her and that I would work to regain his confidence and be a trustworthy partner, all of which I've done. We're, on, we're now on baby number two, just married in early November. He would often bring up polyamory in a hypothetical sense and would say that he had something to tell me but wouldn't give details. I let my anxiety get the best of me and went through his phone. See, I knew it was coming. I knew it. That's why I was like, hmm. To find that he's been sending Snapchats back and forth to Ariel. Snapchat is like a younger people thing, I feel like, nowadays. Or a sneaky people thing. Because it's like it deletes. Okay. I just feel like every time I hear about Snapchat, it's like she just said early 20s. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. We were just talking about Snapchat the other day, about using it, maybe, for the podcast. And now you hear... Baby, chill. It's, <laughs> but I'm I, saying... I, it's like... first. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, not, it's, not, it's not out there yet. <laughs> um, I confront him about it, and he admits that he's in love with her. He wants to have her as his second wife and have children with her. When I tell him it hurts, he says it's just cause and effect of me stepping out on him. Oh, he's been having that reverse Uno card in his back pocket the Which whole time. Which is what time. I hate about it. Because I want to honor his experience and who, what lifestyle he wants to live, right? Like, you want to be poly? I get it. Like, I know there's probably hundreds of thousands of people who live that lifestyle because that's who they want to be. And, that's, and I want 
them to be honor that, right? Be with someone who's going to allow you to be poly. But to sit there and throw in her face something she did two years ago and y'all got over it, y'all got married, y'all had a kid. And now you're saying, well, this wouldn't have happened if you didn't make that mistake. Mm -hmm. It's fucked up to me. Yeah, it's, um, I don't even know the word, but yeah, fucked up works. You know, it's like, so. It's manipulative. It's manipulative and it's also putting, it's a bad name for people who actually are poly, Mm -hmm. right? Because if you're poly, you're going to be poly whether she cheated or not. So don't put the blame on her. I'm poly. You, you forced me into this poly lifestyle. Exactly. With your cheating ways. Exa- exactly. Like you just w- wanted that lifestyle. Or you got cheated on. Now you met someone. And That's now you're saying. in love. So uh, and, you're going you're gonna to explain what I was going to say. No, what are you going to say? Basically, yeah. The timeline is you got cheated on. Mm-hmm. You were hurt. You found someone else. You fell in love. You also still were in love with your your fiance or whatever Mm -hmm. but so now you want her back hey what is a sitch what can i what is a lifestyle that blends these two worlds polyamory Mm -hmm. Hmm. and it's in the bible hmm oh watch when we talk about the bible that's coming up oh okay (laughs) so yeah say that don't put blame on her yeah 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 um let me see he tells me that he recently discovered that he's polyamorous. Is a polyamorous? Why are words escaping me today? He's a polyamorous man, and only is in love with two women, Ariel and I. For now, <laughs> <laughs> am I wrong for wanting to leave him because he is non-monogamous and expects me to allow him to be with her and I? Am I being unreasonable for not allowing him to explore their connection by dating and seeing where it goes? What are your thoughts? How would you answer these questions? First of all, polyamory is not something that's one-sided that you have to convince another person to be a part of. Every time you have to convince your partner, it's like that's a recipe for disaster. If that's something you really wanted to explore, you sit down and explain why it's important to you. And then you allow your partner to just decide if that's something they want to be, like if that's a journey they want to join you on. Mm -hmm. But now you're kind of like forcing her hand. Using um, guilt. So you cheated on me and I polyamory is what saved me. This is what you get. You're lucky I still want to be with you. Um, (laughs) This is just like a classic case of manipulation and using the fact that she cheated. Mm -hmm. Now it's benefiting him because he could always go back to that as a, this Mm -hmm. is why, this is why. Yeah. So I have wrote back and basically said like, don't blame yourself, but he has you know, you just the way you have to honor your boundaries, he has to honor his. So if this is a lifestyle he actually wants, what does that look like for you? Like, are you willing to give him up? Or would you prefer to be with him in this situation that he wants? What are the boundaries here? Like, are you allowed to date other people or is it just him? Like he can have his cake and eat it too. And you be like the nice wife that like takes care of the kids in the house and allows him to go fuck his second wife, you know, whenever he wants. Can he afford to have two wives? Because to be like, I want to have a second wife with children. I can't afford one. Uh, Exactly. (laughs) You get what I'm saying? So these are questions that like I'm asking because I also feel like there are genuinely people who live this lifestyle and make it work. But finances is a big part of it. Like, don't be suckered out of resources, honestly. Um Does he have time for it? What does Ariel think, right? Because the other worry is, is Ariel going to say, okay, okay, for now. But then she's going to be like, you know what? I don't want to be non-monogamous either. Like, you need to be with me and leave her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Are you going to be left out in the dust when he wants to be with her full time? All these questions. So she responded, and I have some more tea to share. (laughs) So he has stated he is not okay with losing Aria or I. Because I asked her, like, what does he want to do? And that in his ideal world, we all live in one big house with enough space for each other. And we each have a quote unquote wing, if you will. With Monopoly money. With Monopoly money. Like, sis. Right? Um, Even after cheating on me with her, he is still stuck on and even hurt by the fact that the two women he loves don't want to be polyamorous with him. So he kind of really guilts them. 
Like, I love y'all. Why can't y'all do this for me? He has made it clear that he wants polygamy as presented in the Bible. So this is why it's like mm. the Bible talk comes up. Yo, people be using the Bible to manipulate. He's like, he's like what, what do I got? What, what can I reach for? Oh, Grasping the Bible. at straws. <laughs> yep. Where the man has wives and the women tend to the kids and the husband and the house. Next thing you know, they're going to be paying his bills too. He's going to be a house husband of two houses and two wives. <laughs> I got a show for y'all to join. <laughs> yes. Um, he believes that because women can only carry one child at a time, it's not natural to be with multiple men. But a man can do just that since he can impregnate many women at a time. This is so like barbaric. And it's like, I get it. When you think, look at animals, when you think of evolution, men can spread seeds. Okay, but we, I get that. As much as you love like evolutionary psychology, it's like we've come so far from those barbaric ways. And the point of evolution is that it changes. Yeah. You cannot be quoting something that was written however many years ago, right? Um, Me, Tarzan, you, Ariel. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. Right? You can. Can you afford to take care of them all? And that's the biggest thing for me, right? No, he can't. <laughs> it's very clear. I'm not saying he's broke, but mm -hmm. he definitely... I'm, I'm just assuming, right? Yeah. Um. Don't... Yeah. At one point she says, as of right now, he can't afford, nor does he have the time for having two wives. Yeah. I feel like he wants to... He wants both women. Mm -hmm. That's like the truest thing out of all this. And he's trying to figure out a way to yeah. do it to where he can do it guilt free. Yeah. Um, he's probably going to just go get another wife and then just be sleeping with both of them still on the side. <laughs> listen, I'm not against polyamory. Me neither. You guys have heard us on this podcast pretty be pretty open with the fact that we have even explored adding a third mm -hmm. to our relationship. But you that's know, the, randomly the other day I was like, I wonder if Travis and I should try to go on a date. Really? You think so? You think, like, how would we be on a date? I feel like I wouldn't even know how to act on a date. I'd be mad nervous. <laughs> All right, anyway, go back to what you were I saying. Wanna, I want to come back to that conversation, but okay. um, really quick. So, but the way we both realized that that's something we'd be into is because mm -hmm. we had conversations, right? And we dug a little deep, and it was like, you know, this is something we really want to explore, and we have explored, and some things haven't worked out, whatever. But it was never a case of, like, I'm dragging Steph into something or you're dragging me into something. Yeah. It's something we both agreed on. Mm -hmm. And if at any point, as much as I loved you, like let's say it was me wanting it more than you and you're like, I can't. The way I feel about you, that would have been it the end. It trumps of, everything. And vice versa. Yeah. So I feel like the fact that both of you are saying no mm -hmm. and he's just like, like you said, grasping at straws, you need to decide whether or not this is the person you're going to be with because it's obvious that he can't make a decision and let me tell you one thing that you know i don't know this man and i don't want to pass judgment too much based on this one story but there is one part of it that's really breaking my heart she mentioned earlier that she's pregnant with number two mm -hmm. and at the end of the second email she says um i lost it oh I'm due to have our second child any day now. And this whole situation has utterly crushed me. Mm. So it's like, how dare you put a woman through this during pregnancy, let alone the end, the second trimester, like hormones, your body's changing, your whole life's about to change. And you need a partner those first few weeks, those first few months of a newborn. And he's worried about trying to be with someone else. Like That's mm. terrible. It literally breaks my heart that he's like putting her through this during this time. Do you think that she needs to basically it's it sucks because I don't know when we got this email a couple of weeks ago, like she probably could have had the baby already. Mm -hmm. And it's like now you have to like consider leaving your fiance. Yeah. She mentioned she's like, it is immensely painful to lose him, but I know it'll be better for me once it doesn't hurt so much. So I think she's already kind of decided. Like yeah. She's not on board. I'm not on board. I just hope that she isn't on board, but also isn't 
putting the blame on herself to change his mind. Mm -hmm. Like think like I need to be a better woman or I need to fuck him better or I need to like I should have never cheated or maybe I need to apologize more, like really convince him of that and then he'll change. I feel like at this point he's convinced that this is what he wants. And then I wonder, like, does he really want it? Like, maybe he wants to be with Ariel, but because she has two kids and they're married, he finds it easier to just have both. Yeah, it's yeah, that's a that's a good point. It's possible that he's like he's over his relationship, but it's just like the right thing to do in terms yeah. of staying with her and staying with his kids. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're like, this is me just assuming that you're using polyamory to kind of like play it safe. Yeah, like I think it's okay if you I don't know if you'll even hear this, but I think it's okay for him to say, I don't want to be with you. And I'm, I'm it's unfortunate that it took us having two kids for me to realize that. Yeah. But I think in the long run, long term, it's gonna be better for both of them rather than him trying to like manipulate and warp people. It, it's gaslighting. And they just got married in November. He should have expressed his desire to be poly and this life he wanted to build with a big house with two wives in it honestly that shit sounds lit <laughs> before november before you got married yeah these are big conversations like and this is not how I, i'm sure i'm not poly but i'm sure anyone who's in that lifestyle will tell you you don't cheat on your partner and then convince them to become poly that's like you have the conversation that's first. a recipe for disaster yeah Ooh. Um. Yeah. Best of luck. Like you said, I think she knows what she has to do already. So yeah. it's always easier said than done. What if he like next week was like, you know what? I just want to be with you. You think it's repairable? Yeah, because I feel like they've both done harm to each other. I don't think it's repairable by them sitting down and having a conversation like we are right now. I think they need therapy and a professional to help them navigate that. Yeah. There's but, gonna be a lot of mistrust for a while, mm -hmm. um, and I think he, and this is uh, obviously I'm just assuming, but I think he just needs to be honest with where his head was at when it comes to this whole poly thing and what he was trying to accomplish in terms of like keeping his situation going. Mm -hmm. But really quick, yeah, <laughs> you brought up during that conversation. Uh, you thought about us going on a date? I don't know why. Like, something came up about dating, I think. And in my head, I'm like, I wonder what it would feel like to go on a date. Yeah. I often think about that because we talk about, like, this put this thing that we would be open to. Mm -hmm. But it's kind of like, it would never, It's this thing doesn't just fall into your lap, yeah. right? I think that's what it was. Like, it was a conversation about how single people meet people. Like, if you don't ever go out your house, like, you're never going to meet someone. So I thought about us, like we talk about this hypothetical third, but it's like, how do we actually meet a third? Yeah. And I, we've spoken about this, but like the first one, we were a little more intentional. The second one was kind of like luck it just happened. or, yeah. you know, things just kind of lined up. Yeah. And it's been years since that one. So it's like, yeah, how do we? I just don't want to be that creepy married couple that's like picking up, trying to pick up girls like that. Just Like we're at the bar. It's like hey yeah like i cannot <laughs> no yeah. that's not how i want it to be like that's i not, feel like I, that's not even our vibe not at all like we met at a bar and it wasn't even like that like it's not like you came and hit on me and it was just no it was just like things aligned and you were helping me get away from like a drunk guy so that whole idea of like i told you that i sent that drunk guy your way right yeah right no. <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, so it just creeps me out. But I'm like, I kind of would be open to like just dating, even if it doesn't lead. And that's another thing. I don't want to have just casual sex and like be weird. Like, I don't want to bring any woman into our space that I feel like is competing with me. Yeah, and we have kids. So it's like, that's another thing to think about. Just it, same way if you were a single woman, you wouldn't just and like prior to just having Eli, mm -hmm. you wouldn't just have men or women just rotating. Rotating, exactly. Um, so that's one of the reasons that it's like, ugh, I don't want to be like dating and it'd be weird like that. But um, if you want to date us. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm open to just like dating. Like, and what does that dinner, look like in like, terms of finding the date? 
I have no fucking idea. Because you don't you hate dating apps. Ugh, no, we're not doing that. That's embarrassing. Not dating apps are embarrassing. I think dating apps are legit ways for single people to meet other single people. But married people. I feel like a married <laughs> couple seeking a third to me feels like weird. Yeah. I don't know. It could be the story I created in my head. Like I talked about in the, the book, like. Does it feel that way? Because that's just how society says it is. And, yeah. and I feel like every time, like I've heard of married people being on dating apps and like they, people like judge them for their like, oh, look, creepy married couple. Yeah. Or like they're so unhappy or like they just want a threesome to like fix their life. Like we've had threesomes. We're ha- we're still, <laughs> we're still very much in love. And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I was like, you know what would be dope to like literally just go to dinner and like talk to a woman like have some extra feminine energy yeah, and like that'd be cool so if you want to go on a date with us <laughs> just, in our DMs. just dm us <laughs> tri-state area oh my god my stomach just grumbled i'm hungry okay that's the cue <laughs> um my love daddy do you still like me i still like you do you still like me i do very much so i right, love you i love you too <laughs> peace, peace y'all, y'all.